Talking back the night, well, Lee General Maddox is the editor of a great news and opinions website called realnewsaustralia.com, and he joins me on Talking Back the Night. Good evening. Hey, Christian, great to be with you. Hey, you've got some great stories on the website. Congratulations with how it's going. We're going to talk about a couple of the stories at the moment which are receiving a, a great deal of uh, clicks and uh, comments from your readers. One that uh, only took place Sunday morning on the Gold Coast at Jupiter's Casino. An off-duty police officer is in some hot water after allegations that uh, his king hit another patron. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I just noticed today, in fact, that there was a story put up by the uh, the Gold Coast Bulletin, um, and I thought the title was uh, incredibly, incredibly mis- misleading, actually, because the title of the article they put up is called "Gold Coast Police Officer Under Investigation After Casino King Hit." Now, if you take into consideration all of the press that you're seeing lately, um, and they're really trying to change the spin on the term "King Hit," they don't want to call it "King Hit" anymore. They want to start calling it the coward punch. You've probably all seen that in the news yeah. and on TV. Yeah. It's all about the coward punch now because they don't want to label these blokes that are doing these hits a king hit because the connotation there is that, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's a good thing that they're a bloke for doing, you know, they're, they're a king for hitting someone, right? Yeah. So the, the double standard here is now the, the title of my article on this one is Double Standards Police Officer Throws King Hit, Not Coward Punch. Now we're talking about a, an off duty. Uh, Gold Coast police officer who was uh, on the dance floor in uh, Jupiter's Casino down there on the Gold Coast just recently is Sunday night, like you said. And he's had an altercation with a chap on the dance floor. Uh, witnesses have reported um, that the, the police officer actually apparently showed his badge to the person who he punched, and then he still went ahead and punched this guy anyway. Now, obviously, I, I would imagine that this has happened after he's had a few drinks. You know, he's off duty. He's not on duty. That's fine. He's entitled to a night out, just like the rest of us. But um, you know, police officers are bound by certain rules, obviously, and they're trained to deal with situations um, where they just simply have to talk their way out of it and not result to violence straight away. So mm. the, the the press got a hold of this. They've put the story together. Gold Coast Bulletin's put it up, and they've called this. They've called it a king hit. Now, my concern is why aren't they calling this a coward punch when the rest of them are coward punches and a police officer throws the hit and he's a king. You yeah, know, okay, so be, uh, yeah, the first concern that you've got here, aside from the fact that here is another very unfortunate event, and I think indeed. we're all in support of this campaign to try to minimise these kinds of attacks throughout Australian society full stop. But would I be f- correct in saying that your main concern here is the, the media's handling of this situation and their wording? We as a so- society, it seems, are trying to get away from this almost positive connotation of a king hit. Oh, what a beautiful punch it was. No, mm. let's start branding it in a more cowardly, callous kind of way rather than such a, such a positive word. Is that more so your, your first uh, observation with this one? Yeah, indeed. I think it's, it's, it's only fair. I mean, we're sort of setting two standards now. We're saying that if a member of the public does it, the bloke's a coward. However, if an off-duty police officer does the, same, the exact right. same thing, okay. yeah. he's labelled a king. He's, king. he's king hit someone. So okay. why is there a difference? If we look then, therefore, trying to maybe gauge some context as to what actually happened in in this uh, event, do we know whether there was any provocation there to lead to this police officer, you know, carrying out something as cowardly as this? Is there a reason for it? There was uh, a quote, I believe, by one of the witnesses um, who did mention that uh, the gentleman had had apparently threatened the the, 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 the police officer. Apparently, yeah. you know, I don't, who, who knows exactly what was said. Maybe he just simply... I mean, I'm not going to speculate, actually, because I don't know exactly what happened. However, um, again, I, I have friends who are police officers, and I know for, for a fact that they're actually trained to deal with these situations in a way where you don't lash out at the person. They're, they're, they're taught in self-defence. Yeah. They know to use their words to get out of right. a situation, you know? Right. So even if there was provocation, even if there were words said, even if there was a little bit of push and shove, our state's finest, who are trained to deal with these types of things, who are out on the streets who actually try to stop these things happening by members of the public, aren't actually able to stop themselves from doing it either. Mm, it, it sets a bad example. You know what I mean? That, that's one of the concerns as well. Yeah. The, the other point that you mentioned, Lee, is that this officer was off duty. Does that change the, the context of the situation? Of course it does, because they need to have lives as well. They're entitled to let off some steam and to have some drinks. They can't be on duty 24 hours a day. That I get. But when these guys are going around brandishing their badges, 
putting them in people's faces, that to me blurs the lines between on duty and off duty, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's probably a, a very important point there is that he did in fact show his badge. And then he was the first person to, to um, throw the punch. And then this guy was unconscious on the ground and paramedics had to actually bring him back. And uh, he was uh, removed from the casino conscious, fortunately. So he did survive. He didn't kill the guy. Um, mm. The other interesting thing I, I, sort of, I should note as well is that the gentleman is yet to actually make an official complaint. The, the victim of the crime hasn't actually made an official Gosh. complaint against the police officer. What, is he so, even in a, in a so, you know, physical condition to be able to do so, or is he, is well, he scared? Well, that's true. We don't really know that for <laughs> sure because they're, they're not releasing his name. Um, they've released the hospital he's been taken to. Yeah. Uh, however, he's not, we're not releasing the name of the victim as well. So either he doesn't want to know, or maybe he knows he did something wrong and he, he pushed and shoved where he shouldn't have. Again, but uh, I think it was an unwarranted provocation, really. Yeah. Um, an unwarranted response. Like, yeah, no doubt there's got to be more about this story that, that comes to the fore before I think any anything seriously can be said about it. But I, I, would it be fair to say that if it proves to be true that this police officer has lashed out and thrown a coward punch, it would be a real blow to the whole campaign, given that one of the, the sides that is you know probably the most effective force in fighting this whole campaign can't even control their own. It would re- really be a blow to the campaign. Yeah, definitely. Then I think that's probably the reason why they're not releasing the name of, um, of the officer in charge, of the officer who um, committed the offence, as well as um, where he's, which uh, station he's from. Yeah, none of that has actually come to light as, um, as yet. It's not yeah. in the media anyway. I'm talking to Lee General Maddox, who's the editor of realnewsaustralia.com. Another story that has been going berserk over the last few weeks on the website, Lee. Uh, in Queensland, these VLAD laws extending as far as tattooists to be fingerprinted, palm printed and photographed for a government database. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, not everyone in Queensland happy about this one. Yeah, that's right. And this one's um, it seems to have touched a nerve. Um, you know, there's plenty of people with ink on their skin in this state. Um, <laughs> and those that have done the work for them, I mean, they're very talented people. It's, let's, you know, let's uh, get that out there in the open as well. These, these guys are actually artists, whether you like it or not. Um, they're, they're actually now going to fall victim to another law coming into place called the Tattoo Parlours Act of 2013, um, which it's not the Vlad law that this is sort of um, coming under, but it's, it's this particular act in, um, of parliament that's now been uh, put in place. And they've got until June to get themselves a licence to be able to become uh, a proper tattooist. So if they don't have a licence, they're not, they're not allowed to practice as a tattooist and the business can be shut down. Now, a lot of these blokes, obviously, um, that do the tattooing, you know, we, we know the kind of people that they are. Um, let's not you know, pigeonhole them, so to speak. There's a lot of a lot of people out there who aren't bikies that are tattooists, but yeah. you know, many of them in the trade uh, do belong to to um, social motorcycle clubs or actual bikey gangs. Uh, I actually had the pleasure of talking to one by the name of Angelo Garozzo. Now, yeah. um, Angelo, he's uh, an admitted member of the I think it's the Rebels bikey gang. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's not. He, when, I, when I was sort of speaking to him, he's the thing he's more upset about is the fact that. Not only do they have to now be fingerprinted, palm printed and photographed, they've also got to pay an exorbitant fee to have a licence to do exactly the same thing they've been doing. Um, the thing I sort of wanted to highlight about this is that he's now saying that he believes that it's, it's unconstitutional to, to make them go through this sort of rigmarole and he's now standing up against it. Now, he has every right to do that as a, an Australian citizen and... I think it's actually our duty to show our non-compliance for unjust laws. And that's exactly what he's doing. So he's gotten a letter from the government telling him that this is what he has to do. He's now written with his own pen and ink on the actual letter and he's sent it back to the Office of Fair Trading. Um, You'll see an image on the website there on realnewsaustralia.com, a photo that um, Angelo has actually sent me as well. Um, So he's sort of standing up for his right really to say, no, I I don't agree with what you were trying to do. and he started to tie in the fact that, you know, they're, they're getting out of hand. The, you know, the police are starting to bully people under these new laws. They're harassing bikers. And they're giving the whole, the whole thing a, a really bad name. And he's even got his own video that he's put up of, of the own sort of harassment that he's suffered himself. You know what I mean? And they, they, they pull him over. They search his car. And they're all nice about it. And they're, they, um, unfortunately, they're well within their rights to do it under the certain yeah. laws that they, um, they have to abide by as well. They, they can actually pull you over and, and search your car. Um, without a warrant, according to the law as well. Um, but this one, like, like I said, has touched a nerve um, amongst the community, and it's you know, it's well over 3,000 likes on Facebook as well. So it's 
Uh, it's really making waves, this one. Lee, uh, just a few months before Christmas, when these VLAD laws were starting to be thrown around in the uh, Queensland media, I think a lot of us were, well, yeah, we were taking the piss a little bit out of them, thinking, yeah, surely this is, you know, a bit of chest beating from, from Newman and, and Jared Blasey. But they not only got them through Parliament, they actually started implementing them the way that they said, the way that none of us really thought that they were actually going to do once they started arresting these uh, bikers at the pub in Yandina just for standing at the bar having a few beers together. Also, I think Victorian mm-hmm. bikies who arrived on the Gold Coast, apparently walking down Surface Paradise having ice cream with their kids. Bang, they were arrested. These guys aren't mucking about. If you told me about these tattoo parlour licensing laws or these prohibitive types of uh, licensing requirements a few months ago, I would have just laughed and thought, yeah, they're not going to carry them out. But from what we've seen, some of these guys have got some problems now. They most certainly do, and I think it's definitely going to... They'll, they'll definitely do... Um, they'll act on them, is what I'm trying to say. But the, the, the real thing I think this one actually comes down to, and I don't think this is... Obviously, it's not about bikies. People need to sort of get that around their heads. And I think it's unfair that the mainstream media has labelled them anti-bikey laws because you know, the word bikey or even motorcycle doesn't even appear in the legislation. And I think it's, again, it's irresponsible for the mainstream media to keep calling them anti-bikey laws. They've just used this law to target bikies um, and those sort of uh, organisations and they're sort of flexing their muscle, I think, is what they're trying to do. They're saying, look, these are the powers we've got. You, you, know, you can't mess with us anymore. The thing I think it really ties into is the fact that we have the G20 coming to Brisbane in November this year. And oh, look, I tend to believe, and I really lean towards the fact that I think that the likelihood that um, groups that might band together to protest the G20 are going to fall victim to this. They, they may find themselves labelled to be a criminal organisation. You might have the, um, the guys from the anonymous-style group that wear the masks. You probably know the Guy Fawkes masks. Oh, you yes. have seen those. Yes. Um, you know, th- these are just sort of, you know, grassroots activist guys that, you know, they don't have to cause trouble, but in the eyes of the mainstream media, they're going to be... That, that's what, exactly what they're going to try and hype up, which is going to get them put onto this list. And before you know it now, uh, now we've got people who are trying to uh, protest being labelled um, under these VLAD laws, and they're going to fall subject to those particular laws as well. Yeah. One final story I'll ask you about, trials for medicinal cannabis uh, Australia, in Australia, Lee, are uh, they're still on the table at this point, or at least the discussion is out there. And, of course, given this issue, it's, uh, it's leading to a lot of polarising of opinion here. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, it was really important to note, and I think it's great to see that, um, that cannabis is still getting talked about it is it has actually made its way onto the mainstream you'll see in my article there trials like you said trials for medicinal cannabis in australia on the horizon and there's a little clip there from sunrise uh from the 13th of january with a young girl named tara who has um epilepsy but she has a severe case of epilepsy yeah. um if you watch the video there, you'll see the mother talk about it as well but just to briefly summarize it you know this young girl has has had something in the arena around 200 seizures a day Ever since she was a little, uh, a little infant, um, and just imagine how traumatic that is for a, for a parent to see that, and then knowing that all of the um, the medications, um, the pharmaceutical drugs, the, all the doctors and specialists you see, no one is helping. No one can help because they haven't got a cure for this thing. But yet she she says, okay, I've had you know, last straw. I'm going to lose my child if I don't take drastic measures which unfortunately she sees these as drastic measures, but they aren't actually drastic measures. So she turns to medicinal cannabis and finds that not only does it work, that this little girl has had, I think she's had maybe one seizure um, since she's been on it ever right. since. And this, this is right. you know, months and months and months. She's, she's almost a, a fully functioning little girl once again. So this is the kind of thing we need to start seeing um, being pushed in the mainstream media. Let's get government, let's get um, trials going for a, for a medicinal cannabis in Australia. I mean, this is yeah. a very a very misunderstood crop, you know what I mean? It's just like how, how there's hemp foods, you know what I mean? You can have hemp foods. Yeah. Hemp oil is not illegal. You can go and buy it at the health food store. I, in fact, have some in my fridge right now. It's it's great. You put it in smoothies. It's fantastic. It's so good for you. Um, but the guy in, um, I'm pretty sure it's in Nimbin, yeah. who actually makes the product, he's had his whole plantation shut down. He's been locked up before. He's come back out. The guy doesn't sell it, okay? He doesn't actually make a profit out of this. He, he basically makes these cures and gives them away to people who need them. So he's actually doing you know, the society yeah. and community a, a very massive favour there. 
I mean, he and he's put his he's put his own life on the line basically because he could he could get locked up for this sort of thing. Right. Okay. He doesn't care. He just wants to help people. Right. So from what um, you so understand, it's not very fair that yeah. um, she got labelled for this sort of thing. Yeah. Right. So from what you understand, the, the his act and the mother's act in um, getting her hands on this stuff wasn't necessarily illegal, but the overall selling or purchasing of cannabis is illegal. So therefore, she was sort of you know just um, thrown into that same bracket. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, and it's it, this is the whole stigma that um, the plant has. I mean, I, I'm I'm not a drug user. I've never used drugs, never smoked marijuana in my life. However, after the research I've done and the people I've spoken to, the authorities on these on this uh, specific topic, uh, Dr. Andrew Catalaris, he's a, an absolute wealth of knowledge on the on the plant itself. Um, when you speak to these these people and you find out more information about it, and you realise the only reason why this particular plant is no longer actually used and grown and, and, and widely supported in the community was because it was um, there was a monopoly on nylon and you have massive um, corporations like the DuPont Corporation that actually made, um, they hired uh, banks and um, PR firms and things to help get cannabis made illegal in the United States. Um, and then it, there was a trickle on effect for the, for the rest of the world for this. It was all because the DuPont company wanted to corner the market with nylon because they've just created this new product called nylon. Um, so this, this, the only reason why it's been made illegal around the world, it's not because of the effects it has on the human body. These are just the things that are hyped up uh, in the media um, and on movies and in, 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 in life in general, you see this, you see cannabis portrayed as a stoner's drug of choice sort of thing. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. The, the statistics clearly show that it, <laughs> It doesn't. It, it, no one has died from a marijuana overdose. Um, and look at look at alcohol. Alcohol is legal to buy for anyone over eighteen, and it's it's responsible for numerous deaths every single yeah. year. Um, so it, you wonder why why is this drug made illegal? You know what I mean? It's it's just a plant, and it has so many industrial uses. I mean, there's there's varieties of the plant that have very 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 low, even minuscule amounts of the THC, which is obviously the the part of the drug that has a psychoactive effect. Um, so there's varieties of plant that, that are useless to anyone wanting to smoke it because it's not going to get you high, but it's there for um, industrial reasons. Yeah. And these are the things I'm in support of is the medicinal use for the plant as well as the industrial uses for the plant. Yeah. For more on these stories and uh, a whole lot more, check out realnewsaustralia.com. Lee General Maddox, thanks very much, mate, and look forward to chatting with you again in a week's time on Talking Back the Night. Great to be on the show, mate. Thank you.